You know, this book reminds me of a book. Story themes. But story themes. Well, it was a good book, but it felt feels like a shadow compared to this one. <laughs> Hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I have this great book, Ink Spell, by Cornelia Funk herself. And well, let's get right on to it. So, first off, our main characters are Maggie, Mo. Maggie's mother Teresa, Dust Fingers, Buried, and the rest. By the rest, I mean Eleanor and the rest. Now, it's been a while since the first book, and they have been living in Eleanor's house for a while. But Maggie, she wants to find a way into the world of, well, the ink world, as they call it now, where Teresa, Risa, or whatever you want to call them, well, or Maggie's mother, told of such wonders that she wanted to see with her own two eyes. And so, and then we find out that Dustfingers has been sent back into his world by a man named Orpheus. This Orpheus seemed to be able to use his word, and he seemed to be able to make some sort of a gateway, a gateway into books. He was very vain, although, and he thought that... Well, he was the best at his trade, not to buy Mo Maggie's father or Maggie herself. Now, they use it, they use, they find out that Farid has been left, be left behind and Orpheus had refused to send him with, well, our dear Dustfingers. And what happened? Well, basically, they had still had the words that Orpheus used to send Dustfingers back. So with a couple additions, Via Maggie, they managed to make a gateway into the bug. Maggie and Farid then together go into this new world. There, they reunite with Fingalio, the author who had been hurled back into this world. And she was absolutely delighted. He was the princess poet, and he wasn't doing too bad for himself. But the world of, Inks, of the Ink World is extremely dark. Without an author's guidance and no sequel, the story had continued on its own. But it seemed that whoever now constructed and made the story was no longer Pangalio. It was death, it seemed, or a diabolical author who wanted nothing but bad turns for his characters, or his or her characters. Cosimo de Fair, the, the prince's son, the next king of the la- the next prince- he was dead. And meanwhile, the laughing prince, who was once the good ruler who fought against Adderhead, he was in grieving, and he was now known as the Prince of Sighs. And everything is so dark, but it gets worse, of course. Basta and Magpie found where their, their parents, well, Maggie's parents and Elena was, and they stole on there, and they grabbed... <sighs> Mo and Teresa, and together they are whipped into the new world of Inkworld via Orpheus, who had been on the side of the of the bad guys from the start. Meanwhile, in that world, things are getting worse and worse. The only people that they can seem to trust is the king of the strollers and of the storytellers, the Black Prince, with his bear, and he was an excellent knife thrower. And it's not looking good. Meanwhile, Dustfingers is reunited with his family and his daughter and a son that he didn't know he had, or his half son, depending how you see it, how you look at it, of course. And, but, things are getting worse. The Adderhead, the cruel ruler who lives at the other side of the woods, well, he is completely evil. And when the prince dies, we know that the Adderhead will try to take over and put his grandson, a mere puppet, on the throne. And we can't let that happen. So, what, what our dear Finoglio does? He makes a new Cosmo. Cosimo. Cosimo was dead, but he makes an entirely new Cosmo that thinks himself is Cosmo, but is really not. A better version, Finoglio said, and he sent sends this new Cosimo in, and Cosimo is back. And we think, whew, things will be better now. Cosimo 
Well, he'll fight against the Adder Head, and he will win. Guess what? That might not work out, but we'll get on to that later. Meanwhile, Bas Magpie had shot Mo and, of course, Teresa, and together they are in a cave. But the Adder Head hears this silver tongue that is suspected to be the Blue Jay, a character, a a fictional character that Finaglio has made as like a robber story, like Robin Hood, for example, to tell tell his yeah, tell her the young children of his landlady. Well, yeah, they think our dear Mo is the freaking Blue Jay, which is not even possible. So basically, they are captured and they are dragged into the palace. Well, the Castle of Night was where the Adderhead is. Now this is a problem. And back to Farid and Mickey. They find out what is going on, but now they are madly in love. Cliché, cliché. And what well, we kind of expected them from, from last time when Maggie was like, his eyes are so girlish, it's so beautiful. And meanwhile, who is it? Fairy? Farid? Yeah. Farid is like, her eyes are like shards of clear sky or whatever. Well, typical of a fantasy story has a romance in it, but at least it didn't get too extreme. And, of course, if we get back to the actual plot, the Adderhead, the Silver Prince, the one who murders and pillages and hangs, but the one who fears death above everything else. And Maggie knows this, and Finaglia knows this too. And once again, he writes something that will bend the reality of his story. And Maggie managed to read most of it aloud. And she made it so, so that she makes a deal with the Adderhead. She says that her father, Mo, is, the book, is a bookbinder. Well, which is true. And he can create a book where if, if the Adderhead writes his name in it, he will be invulnerable as long as the book remains completely untouched. And of course, this is kind of, well, the ultimate deal. If Adderhead doesn't fear death anymore, then, well, that's the only thing that he fears. So he won't fear anything in the world anymore. And then, Maggie and the rest, and, and of course the Blue Jay, or Mo can go free. And everything will be all right. And that was how Finaglio aimed it to be. But after they completed the deal, well, it doesn't work out that well. They managed to do go free, but they don't manage to destroy the Adderhead. And that is a little bit of a problem for next time. Then, in a, in a brief battle where Basta and Basta and a couple of the Fire Razors attack them. The Black Prince and a couple of the good guys fight, and we see Mo in battle, wielding a sword like he's been doing it all his life. Since fin Finaglio had based the Blue Jay off Mo, since Mo was in his story now, he was, well, it's, it's like it bended the reality a bit and made him a good swordsman, like the Blue Jay, they say. And it is honestly, honestly, and then finally... Farid dies, and oh my gosh, it's such a big problem, and Dustfinger sacrifices himself, his life, for Farid's and brings him back to life, but Dustfinger's, he dies, and he is gone. And it is very, very bad. And the book ends on a dark note. They bring Orpheus into the ink world, so that he could help them bring back Dustfinger's. Of course, he does want that. After all, he Dustfingers is his favorite character. But he's vain and arrogant, and he still thinks that he did it himself, not Maggie, who was the actual one who brought him into this world. And honestly, and all in all, it was such a great bug, and it wasn't the same as last time. Last time, when Fenoglio wrote things, it made everything right. They got rid of the main bad guys, which was Capricorn and the rest of the bad guys. But this time, it didn't happen like that. Instead, Fenoglio's plan goes terribly, terribly wrong. And I feel like that adds a new element to the story that doesn't make it seem like a 
Same repeat, but with different characters than last time. Another thing is the fact that it isn't just about a kid who is rebelling against her parents and just going on an adventure. No, her parents and the, all the adults as well are included in the adventure. Much more like real life than most fantasy books. In most fantasy books, the parents aren't allowed to go anywhere and kids do have to do all the work. I feel like this way, it makes for a more interesting story and a little bit more of a unique viewpoint. And the romance was eh, but it was alright. And the fact that when Finoglio, the, like, at the end of the book, Finoglio feels as if his story is now being controlled by the cold man who was dead himself. And he believes that he no longer has power and the words only work for him if it does what they please. And he feels like he was betrayed by his own words and he fears it. He thinks of it as poison, he's scared of it. A writer scared by words. A writer is the one who understands the flow of language, one who can feel the threads of literature. But an author, a writer, who is afraid of words, that is truly terrible. And I feel as if I'm a little bit of an amateur writer thing, and even I love words and I love writing, and I and when I write, I feel like I know what's right, like something's guiding me. And it was like honey, like, well, like, dude, like this, like, phenomenal you described. But for him, it's much, much worse because he's actually, like, a legitimate published author. And I feel like that, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people won't be, uh, won't, like, let's just say, like, think about it. If you're a gamer and then but you were scared of the mouse and the computer. You need the mouse and the computer to game, but you are really, really scared of it for, well, for, for some general reason. I feel like something like that will make you, make you guys understand because a writer who cannot write, who's afraid of words, that is a very, very bad situation to be in indeed. And I feel like all in all, it has a very, 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 let's say, unique plot and a very unique viewpoint, as aforementioned by the some points that I already said. And the plot was excellent. I did not see half of it coming, like I do with most fantasy books these days. It is such a great book, and it isn't cliched like uh, like the rest of the Disney movies that people you like for some reason. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. Cornelia Funk weaves a good tale, so does Finoglio, he just has to realize it, and I am very very excited for the conclusion of the trilogy, Ink Death. You can look out for that soon on the channel, have a great day, bye!